So what is going to happen to us in 2025? What do you need uh, to plan for? What actions do you need to take, not only to prepare for 2025, but once we're there, how best are off? What are we doing? So um, join me and Mary. Joining me tonight is Mary. <laughs> in this episode for a preview of the planet's progression um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. And 2025, Mary says, is a year of cosmic shifts, um, more social upheavals, new ideas, exploration. I want to hear about the technology. Oh, and yes. Pluto and Jupiter and Mars. What are they doing? So Mary, <laughs> we Mary's an amazing um, astrologist. She's also a hypnotist. She's also a medium and a master tarot card reader. Um, and as I, you know, I always bring people on the show who are available to you. So listen to her. And if you have questions, get in touch with her. Um, and uh, I'll yeah, try yeah. to find, if anyone has any questions right now, I'll try to bring them in. But I'm so happy to have you back, Mary. Welcome to the Angelscapes podcast, where you're encouraged to uncover and develop a direct connection with your soul's power, wisdom, and spiritual intuition that is ready to blossom. We'll explore new ideas, compelling tips, and real steps to help you learn simple spiritual practices. We're a safe place to learn more about accessing your soul's power with education and spiritual wholeness that could bring more clarity to your life. Now here's your host, a practicing medium, Akashic Records practitioner, spirit artist, coach, and mentor, Dr. Reverend Nancy Smith. Yes, I'm so happy to be here, Nancy. Hi, everybody. Hello. I I know you were saying, Nancy, in, in some of the pre-comments, it's like, give me something to work with in 2025. I think you're going to have plenty to work with in 2025. Don't worry. Don't worry. There's plenty to work with. Yeah, and, we'll and make... positive. People mm -hmm. are very anxious. And, um, and without going mm -hmm. into um, polarization, people are opposite on are anxious on both ends of the polarization, I guess. Sure. Oh. Yeah. That makes that makes sense. If you think about it, we've had um, you know, a year of of upheaval and change of 2024. Um, I think for some folks it's been rough. Um, some of us has also kind of gone on that ride too. So 2025 is going to remind us that we have some inner work to do. And the big chief Pluto is going to let us know about the work we need to do. So that I think is a really great opportunity for us. And I've, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff to talk about, but I wanted to really start off with Pluto. If that, if that works for you, Nance, what do you think? Should we start there? Yeah. Pluto's been just kicking everybody. Every, uh, Pluto's turning yeah. everything upside down and, and it's transit. It's a slow moving planet. So when it transitions from what Capricorn to Aquarius is Aquarius, what's going correct. On. Yes. You got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's turning things upside down is from, from what I have heard. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So Pluto, like you said, is a slow moving planet. It usually takes 16 to 20, maybe 22 years to get through a sign. Okay. That's how long. So for us, we're only going to experience two or three Pluto changes. If we even experience that much, we might not, we might experience two, but the point is, is that this is what we call, um, a generational planet. And it's also one that affects the, you know, it affects everybody, it affects the collective. So for our folks uh, that for the past 16 or so years, our Aries, our Cancers, um, our Libras and our Capricorns, uh, this has been a little bit of a rough ride for you guys, because you really had to look at what changes you needed to make in your life to make life more in line with who you are. OK, and a lot of that came very practically for those folks. You know, it might have been um, purchasing something or selling. You know, I'm talking about property, purchasing, selling um, uh, career kind of stuff, you know, things like that. It was very practical. OK, so over the past 16 years, we have seen a lot of changes. You know, if you think back to about 2006, 7, 8, somewhere in there, um, when Pluto was getting ready to shift, we had the um, the crash. We basically had a crash in 2008. Um, and so a lot of businesses had to be restructured. They had to be looked at differently. We had COVID, right? So, and a lot of people worked from home. Now coming into Aquarius, if we think about Aquarius, Aquarius is the rebel. They're the inventor. 
They're the social changers. Uh, they are the innovators, the inventors, all about technology, all about social change. And here's the other one I think that's making everybody nervous, which I understand, um, is uh, government structures. Okay. Oh, that was really Pluto and Aquarius is government. Okay. It can be. Yeah. Because Aquarius is the, um, you know, is universal and how things affect us within the collective. So government agencies do, they affect us in the collective, you know? Um, so, you know, we hear these things like, let's, let's be honest. I, again, it's, it's more of just for discussion purposes. It's not which side of the political side you're on, but you know, we're taught, there's talking about, there's talk about things being eliminated, right. things coming into play. And right. I find it very interesting that Elon is around this stuff because he's that technology innovator. Exactly. Exactly. Right. I, maybe he was. Here's what I thought. I mean, everyone's afraid. Well, Elon and he's. Mm -hmm. kind of, there's a lot of good and bad opinions towards Elon, but I mm -hmm. kind of feel like he has something huge up his sleeve as far as technology go. Yeah. <laughs> haven't quite heard it yet or maybe he hasn't figured it out yet it's gonna go boosh but right but anyway that's my I like throwing it right. well i agree with you no 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 it's perfect yeah because i think what elon will do is he'll try to merge some technology with government or because i think he's what digital uh i forget what his new title is with uh, rant, uh i can't think of the other person anyway my brain's farting tonight but he elon is all about technology now in government so, and like I said, some departments are going to probably be changing. Um, also, uh, Pluto and Aquarius is going to represent medical changes. And it's going to represent um, people who, you know, are, are needing new treatments. We're finding new things pop up um, with treatments and medicines and things like that. So, you know, these are also things we're going to have to look at. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot globally that's going to happen with this. And that's the thing for you individually. Well, you got to look in your chart where Aquarius is. So folks with Aquarius suns, I have an Aquarius moon. If you have an Aquarius moon or you're an Aquarius rising, you're going to feel it pretty heavy because those are personal planets and they're, you know, the basics of who we are. So I hate to say it, our Aquarians, but, you know, this is going to be a little bit of a rough ride for you. But it again makes us look at personally what we need to heal or what we need to pull up from the depths or what we need to change in our lives that's going to bring transformation mm -hmm. i think there's no getting around it though see that's the thing in in the past it's like you know we can hide from it it's like uh, we can't hide from this nope yeah so good news is that you can make some real big personal changes um and that this may be the time to do it so you can figure out what exactly you need to live your life it's really important well this is about personal responsibility I, I feel yeah like yes we talked we heard a lot of conversation talking about um i loved hearing the general tones being fl flung at each other in in the mm -hmm. campaign and i'm not saying size or anything but i'm saying there was some talk about i will fix this and other talks about we will fix this to right. get and I, and I feel that um, it re we will fix this, uh, whatever mm -hmm. it is. It was resonated with me more than I will fix this. Yes. Where yes. It sounds like Pluto and Aquarius sounds like everybody together. Yeah, it has to be because it's new movement. And, you know, you can you can create new movements and revolutions for yourself, right? You can control those, but globally, you need your partners, you need your neighbors, you need your community, you need... You know, you need those things that are going to bring you into your own revolution. So, yes, this may be, for example, there's a there's a real important uh, social change that you want to see happen. Well, you might start volunteering. You didn't do that before. But you need to do that to go through some some changes for yourself to to be able to really be part of this change globally. So it's sort of two, it's two sided. We have to take personal accountability, like you said, personal responsibility, but now also we're going to see a lot of checks and balances globally, which I don't think everybody thinks is going to happen, but. Yeah. There's a lot of worry about that. Now mm -hmm. checks and balances globally, globally, 
we've seen a lot of change in trends um, towards right. conservatism, conservative. Um, yes. And I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a global political person, but right. this, it, talking global with, with some of these planet mm-hmm. things. And um, what, what do you think from the conservative movements, mm-hmm. what's going to happen in 2025? Are they going to get more conservative or do you think they're going to start to, these movements need to consider all the people? A little bit more. Well, that's it. It's got to consider all the people. And so what's going to be really important, guys, for, for you, for personally, I just think in general, is to find a middle ground if you can. Now, there's some social projects or change that needs to happen. It's just we need to move it. I get it. But if you're trying to figure out how to create like change within your community or change within your home, there's got to be a middle ground. Aquarius always wants to think of like what we can do to be for benefit for everybody. Yeah. So this is a really good time to figure out like, how do I negotiate? How do I find middle ground with folks? And honestly, I think it, if we can um, come together a little bit then, and listen, I'm not saying you have to agree. Um, then we can have a lot more change than we think we can. Some people are going to be polarized. They're just polarizing. That's it. They're going to say, oh, no, I, I can't even think about doing that or this, you know, to help because I do whatever, you know. But when you have those people that are like, no, I, I want to listen to what you have to say and I want to kind of work on this together, then we're much more powerful. You can't change the extremes. Don't worry about the extremes. Worry about like, Hey, you know, you may be this and I may be that, but if we work together, we're all happy. Great. Let's do it. You know, so it's, it has to be, more, and again, remember Aquarius as the re- rebel is going to make you think differently. Okay. So, you know, conservatives might look at it as, well, you know, maybe we're being too hard on this. Maybe we can find, a, a, you know, someplace to move over a little bit and, you know, uh, progressive moves over a little bit and we can get closer. But I, I, that's the thing. See, Pluto is going to say, uh-uh, you're going to try to do that? Nope. If that doesn't affect everybody and help everybody, tell me why you're doing it that way. So Pluto's going to call to the carpet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And again, for everyone. So this, it's positive in the sense of, like, if you feel stuck, mm-hmm. forget it with Pluto on Aquarius. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to say suck, stuck. Or if you do, you're going to be really aware that it's hurting you in a way that you really don't want it to hurt you anymore. You know, for example, very easy example, I hope for everybody. Um, But, you know, you're at a job that you know you need to leave and you're sticking it out and sticking it out. And you're like, you know what? These these other people got promotions around me. Like, I I need to have my own rebellion here for me and leave, you know, or do whatever or talk to my boss, whatever it is. But that's what I mean. Like, you're not going to be allowed to stay in those places that no longer serve you. It's just... Nah, Pluto's like, nah, let's shake this up a little bit. Wait, Pluto, what? <laughs> you know, oh my so, God. Yeah. 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 So that's just something to remember is that, you know, it's not here to hurt us. It's not here to, um, it's creating revolution. And I got to be honest, guys, sometimes revolution is not pretty. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not. It's not. It's, it's, it's fight. It, it's, it's, uh, standing up for your ideas. I don't want to say fighting. But standing up for your ideals and standing up for the people you love and standing up for all that is where the energy is going. So be a part of it. Be a part of it. You know, we all we all need support from everybody, even like, again, if it's your own personal revolution, get that support. You can redefine what revolution is, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, change of uh, we we talked a little bit when you sent me some of the stuff to read about. Yeah. yeah. It's, change of mind the changes seems like there's a change of Mm -hmm. my new thoughts new ideas yes yes so we're going to see different oh sorry go ahead (laughs) oh i was just thinking part of the part of the being stuck and getting unstuck is new perspective new thoughts new ideas Mm -hmm. yeah and be open to those because we here's the thing i i've heard i have not been in the military y'all and thank you all for who have been in the military but a lot of times they create exercises where you have to rely on each other you can't finish it without your team right Definitely. this is this is the same thing this is you can't keep going to make social change without your team right so that being mm-hmm. said over and over again this is the age of um, not the hero anymore that myth is going now it's, it's yeah working together so yeah. new myth the group myth or whatever yeah 
like yeah team it's it's um so when we hear people it seems to me talking about i don't have all the answers i'm the leader of this because you did talk about this is a time of taking charge and becoming your own leader mm -hmm. but the leading thoughts are need to connect with other people not i'm um i've got the flag and i'm running with it follow me right it, yeah you you it's not gonna work in the sense of like oh I, you just follow me like those kind of you know authoritarian leaders um unless they have the buy-in from their team so strongly it's not gonna work now here's something else y'all should watch because where we're, we're taping this um we have some folks getting nominated to different positions if we want to see how that's going to go and if there's a check and balance, watch the nominations and whether they get in or not. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, that might be, it, it might be an interesting check and balance to see. It might surprise us one way or another. Um, but that that's what I mean. So like things like this that are coming up, wait, are we okay with this? Are we, do, are we okay with this as a group? Like as a collective? I don't, you know, I don't know. So that's, that's why your inner revolution We'll connect with other inner revolution folks. And then as a group, you can go forward. But yeah, it's no real grandstanding at this point. It's it's like you said, it's not follow me. It's um, listen, everybody, is this the right way to go? Yeah, let's all go. So that's that's more of the energy. Mm -hmm. So how much of this um, it, we have uh, with Pluto and the Aquarius, um, how much learning, how much do people need to catch up? People say this is the... Um, the age, this is the year for waking up or transitioning or transforming or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. How much is that in, in where with everything? Oh yeah. I think we're going to see people. Um, there's going to be new medicine and technology from that. There's also going to be new things that come out from a spiritual perspective. So the spiritual perspective isn't quite um, like a Pisces energy, but it's more of, you know, I, I want to think of the things that are higher, you know, like I, you know, I know people who have started, you know, like community food banks. Those are, those are helping out your, your community, you know, you're meeting a basic need. These are things that we're, um, we're going to have to focus on because Pluto is going to say, well, you can't get up here without the foundation down here. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Right. So we got to get people to a place where they can think about the higher purpose but if they don't have their basic needs met, we got to help them with that. So Pluto's going to go around and go, oh, okay, we got to fix some stuff. What are we doing? You know, how do we feel about things? And, you know, this isn't so much of, uh, of a like um, secrets are going to come out, but it is one of those things where um, the ideas are going to come out and whether or not someone grabs onto them is a different story. So someone might say, well, I try to advise them on that and they decided not to pick up on the idea. Okay. Uh, yeah that okay. can be yeah but it, pluto's not going to let that continue to happen so we're going to see stops and starts with that and some you know some uh challenges around it is that a nice way to say it well those secret motivations is what i hear you say. yes not that yes secret, keeping a secret but secretly i right. wrote for this thought or idea the, mm -hmm. like those are what's going to be stopped on or we yeah know? Yeah. It's yeah, that's really it. And we're going to see new teachings from a spiritual perspective. Um, you know, there might be new offerings for folks or just new um, connections that we're making with different types of spirits that, you know, are coming forward or a new energy that people are coming forward with. So I'm sure like Nancy, with your Akashic records, you're going to keep seeing different. I don't know if the, this is kind of an interesting question, y'all. So is the energy shifting? Are you getting different types of information coming through with your Akashic record readings? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And as a matter of fact, I think it was we were, before we started, I, I yeah. said, um, as I was reading for people, I did 32 readings last weekend. Um, Woo! um you know, it's basically saying, you know, the thing that you've been preparing for all this time and we need to do this and this is going to happen and this is the air. So mm -hmm. our practice, this is where it's, we're not in school anymore. We're in life. And, mm -hmm. kind of, and um, that, um, so what does it really mean to you? Right. It's not a theory anymore. It's an action in life. Mm -mm. And that's what was coming up over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
so they're getting the people are getting the message hopefully out there that you know this is a this is a time where we can't just hang back you know if we really want to change things in our communities our lives you know in government you know in medicine this has got to be you know you can't sit by the sidelines anymore guys you got to be a part of it yeah well yeah, yeah it's, it's like in medicine i give that feedback say well that pill is not working get it out mm -hmm. of my or or the or um, I don't like this solution. Um, I've already done right. kinds of solutions. What is a new solution? And really put your caregiver on notice. Um, mm -hmm. To me, sounds like or you know, or find a new caregiver or mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it it is. It's things like that. It's um. I I don't know. And I've noticed over the past few months, and maybe I'm just looking for it. But like, I'll say to somebody, like, I have this kind of problem, and they're like, oh. Hey, I know someone who takes care of that. I know someone that can help you with that. I know, wait, I've got a contact. Like, it just feels like that's more part of the, the course now than what has been before. Maybe networking will become a more, like you said, more of a force networking. Yeah. With each other. We're connecting each other to the right people. Right. Would be right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it goes back to a time where we, I mean, and please excuse me guys for saying this, but I think we're going to become much more aware that we need to care about each other. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like we we are going to really feel the pains of our friends and our loved ones and our, um, you know, people around us, whether it's work, whether you're, you know, at the gym, whatever it is, you're going to feel, you're going to be more aware of what people are are going through and the commonality between the two. Well, that's kind of nice because I feel like we mm. lost it. Um, yeah. I feel like the um, pandemic um, isolated us and we mm -hmm. forgot being human with one, one another. But coming yeah. after that isolation, people, mm -hmm. I see, I saw years of hesitancy. But mm -hmm. here, the, the past few months, um, I'm feeling people want to, let's, let's get going. Right. This is very right. feeling. Even being in, um, like I said, I did all those readings at an expo last weekend. People's thought processes and connections were very different this past mm, week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To belong to something or mm -hmm. I don't say belong, but they wanted to, I don't want to do this in isolation anymore. That's my side. Right. Right. I, I, I think, um, and again, guys, this is not anything that I'm, I'm not knocking one side or another. Um, from the politics, but I think the election brought everybody out to say, okay, this, this issue is important to me now, like whoever got in, you know, Trump's in, but like, all right, he has people who have issues that are important to them. Kamala has people who has issues that are, that are important to them. So if we didn't get our candidate in or our candidate got in, that's okay. Um, it's more of like, so what do I do with, you know, these issues that they talked about that were important to me now it, it motivated us to get moving and get, active and that was that was a that was an important thing that came out of that election to say we got to we got to get moving you know we got to be active on things and change things and i think that's on both sides i really do um i, I think bo both sides are looking at that mm -hmm. the, the issues that were brought up are, are real issues on both sides and whether mm -hmm. one person got in and the other one didn't those issues are still very alive and still need to very be very alive um and yes so ma'am keep speaking up mm-hmm Speaking of like, um, yeah, yeah. Whatever place you are in the world, um, don't disengage. Well, I, I feel like mm -hmm. I, a lot of people, do, I didn't get my way, so I'm going to disengage. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, your voice is even more important now, guys. It's even more important. Mm -hmm. And um, there, oh, I was going to say something else about like the getting activated, but um, yeah, it's not, like I said, it's not a time to sit on the sidelines and really, um, I, I I've never seen um, this group like, I, you know, there's a younger group that's been, um, you know, we had like my niece was 19. So she was able to vote in her first election. Like, I think that group, that young group, 18 to 25, I think they're the uh, the alphas. Sorry, guys. Um, they're going to they're we're going to see a lot more community service and work working through them. Um, we'll see it in the older ages, too. But the younger ones are really like, ah, wait, let's go do something. You know? Oh, what's mine? I was, I, mm -hmm. boy, that must have been something for her to go vote for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, 
you know, here we have this new generation that's coming in and voting and has a voice. And uh, so that brings a little extra kick to the energy that we have going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. you and I, I did feel with the, um, and I don't, we're not talking about 25 to 30, um, right. but I feel this was, this is the last hurrah for the older generation. I really feel like mm -hmm. generation. this is the last baby boomers. This is the last peep we're, we're, um, new thoughts and new ideas. So whatever yeah. the baby boomers created as a foundation, is not necessarily going to rule what's happening with the newer generation? But we're having right. voices coming out. Well, yeah. And you have to look at the generations for what they bring to the table. So if we say that generation alpha is like, you know, they're out there, they're ready to do the work. They're passionate about it. Not that baby boomers aren't, but we need to take the wisdom from the baby boomers who created the foundations and say, why'd you do it that way? What's yeah. good? What's bad? Why should we keep it that way? I don't, I don't, this doesn't seem to be working for the generations that are coming in. So why, how do we, we, I would say that's the best thing is that you work with the generations on their strengths because we all contribute something yeah you know? exactly yeah. In, in later baby boomers I, I forget mary if you're i think you're the next one but i'm an ex i'm an ex yeah is the um in my generation we saw women's rights coming up like never mm -hmm. before at least in the 90s we saw um women's health care totally turned around and then mm -hmm. um i that's top of my head right now and right to watch what's been happening, watch when my daughter started giving birth to her babies and how she yeah. was, doing, and then listening to the general public talk about it. It's breaking my heart to see it go back. I'm hoping that it comes forward again because yeah. there was so much work in my generation of you can't, uh, even just getting women back into the birthing room instead of t treating birthing as yeah. a surgical situation or medical, you're treating it more like this is a process. This is a natural process was so exciting yeah. to me coming into my time for having kids and then seeing it yeah. go, I don't want to have it. But um, yeah. I'm hoping that, that this will come back, bring it back. Um, right. Well, I think the, uh, you know, I, I, my generation, I was born 72. So it was, that's when Roe v. Wade, I think 72, 73, yeah, 72. So um, that was when it was passed. So now it's for me to see it roll back. Like I didn't live without, Wait, did. you know thought right after, and you did so after and i i i saw friends who were close to death die you know yeah. i mean just horrible things horrible things yeah. happen and um and the and the lack of compassion because they broke a rule or they really kind of understanding the woman's role in the community mm -hmm. and the way the community was treating the woman really had a good hard look during my mm -hmm. generation and changes and i feel that um I don't know how we it slipped back. I don't right. think it needs to stay slipped back. I need I think that mm -hmm. it needs to um the, the these next group of women um right there uh they have the foundation it's already been done before. Mm -hmm. It can happen again. It doesn't happen yes. the way where it was where I gosh I had oh, I bring me back here. I had girlfriends um in high school Share, uh, sharing lockers. Remember we used to share lockers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a suitcase in, in a locker. I had no room to put anything. And uh, and she was living out of her locker because her house was so difficult and she was terrified that she was pregnant. Oh, no. And so she was sh being shamed, but it wasn't her fault because of the home situation and how right. this thing came about. There was no um, resources for her to go to. Nothing. Right. And right. I was... Yeah, I'm a kid, you know, I'm scared for her. And I'm like, I don't yeah. know, but I can't bring her home. And I want to bring her home, but this is, you know, and all this going on. So now as I hit college and it, there were places women could go to. And mm -hmm. then I started having my kids. Um, violence was huge. Violence against women, violence in families was huge. And mm -hmm. there were all work groups started happening. And I don't know what's happening to those support groups now. We got to yeah. keep, this is one place where I feel Pluto and Aquarius. Women mm -hmm. speak up again. Women need, oh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lose ground. We can't lose this ground. Right. Oh, no, no. And honestly, like, you know, to our, to our uh, gentlemen that are out there, um, we need your voice too. 
You know, we need your voice too. So yes, absolutely. I think women are going to be loud and we need men to join us on that. Um, because yeah. I hate to say it, but we, you know, this is, this is not just a woman's issue. It is a human issue as far as I'm concerned. And, um, if you care about humans and you care about kids, you know, this is, this is an issue to look at with compassion. I don't think, you know, I could go off on my soapbox, but I'll say that Pluto is going to say, that and men too mm. because in, back in my day it wasn't men they were not right i, I wasn't um aware of men who were interested but i've been noticing how um say for instance my kids generation they're raising their kids yeah. now and the men are so responsive to their children now it's they're mm -hmm. so different and yeah. so really hope that the men will say this is a family issue this is a people issue and yeah i want yeah. i want my wife to have the best care possible i want my you know um daughter you know i'm right for my son to have right. a feeling oh I, I think we're up for a men's revolution to be honest with you we, yeah we, i think you know women, men's rights are a little different than women's rights not to mm -hmm. but but you have a right to have your feelings you have a right to be yes of the family process you have a right you know um, men have been in some ways written off in a, on a lot mm -hmm. of levels. So I would love to. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. Cause there are a lot of, um, you know, some of my friends, um, that are male, you know, say, Hey, I'm behind, you know, like I'm behind you and post stuff on Facebook. And I mean, I know it might not be a lot, but I know I, it's different than what I've heard in the past. I'll say it that way. So I think we're seeing like some of that emotion and that support coming that it hadn't been, yeah. you know, but then also if we take the issue of folks that, you know, are same sex couples or they're adopting or, you know, there's, there's still barriers there for folks to, to have children and things like that. So um, we need it for, for everybody. We really do. Um, it's a, it's a human rights issue, I feel. Um, and it's allowing people to make choices that are best for them. I agree. I agree. Yeah. When yeah. one, when, when one group of people are, are suppressed or don't have rights, then we're, we're limiting our those people who are limiting their rights to everyone is limited i, I think that freedom for all is what afraid of it right yeah i mean i you, we're both very clear on that is that folks need that um and you know the other thing that pluto in aquarius touches is disenfranchised so you're going to be hearing a lot more and getting a lot more information about you know folks that are really suffering right now and um they need help and so those voices are going to get louder which they absolutely should um yeah. And, uh, but we're going to be listening. Pluto and Aquarius, we're going to be listening to make some change. So Call the community, mm -hmm. Call the right. Community. Yeah. Right. And, and I want to add in the disenfranchised people, um, um, are some of them, you, you would think they weren't disenfranchised, but they are. There's again, mm -hmm. I'm going back to, to the, to, um, a ma the male population. I feel like there's a big chunks of, of them of male population that are disenfranchised. And I, I kind of somebody's gonna smack me upside the head, but some of those people who are really, really, really angry right now, mm -hmm. I'd like to hear what they're angry about. Mm -hmm. What happened in your life that brought you to this point of life isn't fair or life not, you know, when mm -hmm. they clearly see that they're in a they're struggling with their own right, their own like yeah bills where am i gonna be when i'm older where where are my kids going and i give up because it's just a little bit too much i'd like to yeah working poor i guess but yeah yeah no it's it's definitely again the 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 education the voices are going to get out there there's there's a lot of information because aquarians are um air signs oh so it's all here so it's not here's the thing it's not just going to be emotional like it's not it, yes there's going to be a lot of emotion around it i'm not saying it's not but people will have the information to back up the emotion i am mad because you took this right away from me i am mad because you're not doing anything about making sure my medical care gets better i am mad because like so we're going to hear it a lot more than we have in the past yeah so, it would be really good to get the facts out mm -hmm. yeah it really is true that the medical industry isn't really supporting people in general that you know yeah. it is but the facts are straight not just general paintbrush it's all right. it's all yellow or it's all no it's it's many uh it, aspects it's very subtle mm-hmm
It is. It is. And I think also us being in the, you know, we're in the Northeast. It's, it's very different than being in different parts of the country or different parts in the world. So I think sometimes we take some things for granted in the Northeast because we're also like, well, that's, that happens here. Like that's what does that doesn't happen everywhere. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. I didn't know that, you know, so we're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn a lot. Well, that's excellent. Yeah. I was curious about something. If you saw this in the 2025, maybe it's too soon. Mm -hmm. Laughs, kind of weird. But that this whole UFO, and now they call it a different name, USO or whatever, um, has mm -hmm. been in front of the Congress for a while now. Mm -hmm. And it's in there talking, yeah. questioning. And is there anywhere in the planets where it says we're finally going to do a breakthrough on this or start to really get a handle on what's going on or, or be informed or have a connection well there's pluto again um and i'm just i'm just looking at also the other place it might come out i'll tell you guys um there's a there's a couple places uranus is going to go retrograde january 30th 2025 through september 6th and uranus and aquarius are besties hmm? uranus is going to be retrograde for that long yeah yeah it takes a little time uranus is, is a slower mover too but with that, Uranus is going to be bringing things up that need to be looked at from the past. And since that's the innovator and the, you know, the kind of different and the unique, um, that's when it's going to pop out, probably between January 30th and September 6th. And I wouldn't be surprised if it pops out like either on January 30th or September 6th, because when a planet goes retrograde or it goes direct, those are usually pivotal days. So we might hear about it one of those days and then get more news as the days go on. So I, you know, I'm looking at um, the, some of the different retrogrades and things coming up that might be where it pops out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things where we have a whole new group coming in to Congress too. Some folks are, you know, we're switching out some things. So we're going to have some people bring it up. There's new voices in there. So they're not all bad. <laughs> yeah. They're not all bad y'all. They're not all bad. You know, but yeah, I think, again, it's technology because, you know, a lot of our, our understanding is, is that, you know, aliens have better and different technology. I think that's where some of the new technology is going to slip in. Right. But right. Oh, the other thing people need to think about with that um, is uh, AI. AI, they're going to want to do more with AI. So um, good, bad, eh. Um, but I think they're going to find ways to make AI work for everybody and, um, not stealing everybody's work, <laughs> you know, but that's, I, we're going to get some new technology around that too. There's going to be more development with AI. So that's kind of exciting too. I, I've been reading or sensing or um, yeah. AI in the medical field actually coming yeah. with not just cures for cancer, but understanding diabetes or understanding medical mm -hmm. issues where, um, the a the um, it uh, can handle solving more problems all at once. So there's right. talking. There's some talk about that in the tech field of what mm -hmm. can apply that. And I think they're excited. yeah. Um, I'd say yeah. So take for example, like my mom has Parkinson's disease, right? They don't know what causes that. They may find something over these next, you know, it's 20 years, it's going to be in Pluto and Aquarius, but there may be some breakthroughs around that or breakthroughs around Alzheimer's or dementia. Cause again, mind kind of medicine, it's all mind medicine. So um, not saying that other, there aren't going to be other breakthroughs, but we might see them in mind issues. You know, like if you have a, oh, God bless you if it happens, but uh, you know, like you have a head injury or you have, you know, Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or dementia, anything that goes with the brain or, um, there may be even some mental health breakthroughs, which that would be amazing too, because it's it's some mind work there. So, yeah, so that's the places we should look for those breakthroughs. Um, but listen, if they come out with other technology, you know, different type of technology to help, let's do it. So, well, you know, I've been really curious about watching the um, the plant medicine, the um, mm -hmm. some of the um, hallucinogenic plant medicines where right. they that is curing some addictions or or some. Mm -hmm traumatic stress or some things i'm hoping yeah. that that will will um go a little further because the the answer's in nature it's always been in nature um mm -hmm. so maybe that could that could be uncovered a little bit too next year 
Well, that would be great for a lot of people because I think right now those barriers to some of that plant medicine is not helping people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 you know, there are ways to work with the brain if you do it correctly. I know Matthew, we just lost Matthew Perry to uh, ketamine, but um, you know, he wasn't being monitored. It wasn't used necessarily in a therapeutic way. It's terrible. It happened, but ketamine can also be very good for that kind of stuff. So that again, new ideas, we might be seeing more of that. Um, mm -hmm. and a loosening up of how people think about that stuff too, because, you know, if you can create a new neural pathway, and have Except, some relief of trauma. Whoa. Hey, exactly. that's, I've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. Um, I watched that with, um, I, I have close friends who, um, don't even think about the drug or the alcohol anymore. It's not even right. a, like they're totally changed and the relief yeah. in life is ginormous. And I thought, mm -hmm. you know, that's something really worth pursuing. So that's my, one of my private little, I hope we can make yeah. some headway on that. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. 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 Um, so let's see what else. So we have, you were talking about Jupiter transiting through Gemini. Mm, so I can talk about that. So Jupiter has been, it usually takes about a year to go through a sign roughly. Right. So we've had Jupiter and Taurus. So y'all might've seen some things around, um, either some luck around your finances or some real expansion that maybe went too far. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm pointing, I went, mm, um, so that is going into Gemini now. So Gemini really likes to research, um, likes to talk about things, um, likes to gather information. Like the, the Geminis are the talkers. So where you might see expansion is places where you're doing research or trying to understand certain things where you can network. You know, we were talking about the network with Pluto and Aquarius. Gemini, Jupiter and Gemini is going to help along with that. But if you think about Jupiter, it's the biggest planet. So it's really like our Zeus, you know, of the God of the gods, right? So Zeus did whatever he wanted to do. Jupiter sort of feels the same way. And that encourages us to do new things. Um, but it's in the idea of communications and reading and research and school and all of that kind of stuff, your basic educational kind of stuff. Um, but you're going to want to go further with that. So you may want to um, write a book. Nancy, you got to write another book. Okay. Seriously. Right. Number three, you, this is number, this would be, no, wait, four. I don't, well, I've done a number of, of, of chapters, yeah. but this would be for me. Yes. And I have to say it's already in the works, but it will be number three of just me. Yes. Yeah. Cause I was going to say, I knew there was other ones out there. So Nancy is an author, y'all a very it's good one. Two. Actually, to be honest with you, Gemini, I can't make up my mind. So I think it'll be two. That's yeah <laughs> there you go yeah that's the other yeah that's the thing guys you got to be careful with gemini's because um with that gemini energy because you might get too focused in yeah. gemini might be like so for example you know it might be looking at, all right so this string is as long as this string and it's like you don't need to do all that you know mm -hmm. just get get some get some depth a little bit of depth and then don't get so wrapped up in the details that you don't do anything because jupiter's like oh you got an idea you know let's go um so don't also, don't <laughs> I just what did you say all these ideas, but no action taken. Wait a minute. We mm -hmm. gotta... Yeah. Yeah. So that's important. And also you will find luck in those places. You will find, you know, expansion in those places. So if you are trying to write a book or you have one written and you want to bring it forward, then this, that's a good time to do it because people will be more open to reading things and, and looking at things that have to do with knowledge. Right. So where is this Jupiter? When is it starting to tra transit Gemini? I'm going to write that date down right now. Yeah. Hold on. Let me uh, let me get the actual date for you, because I wrote down the retrograde dates, but I didn't write down the actual dates. It's in. So I will. You know, the great thing about the Internet while I stall is that it will tell me. Um, so it's already in Gemini. I knew that I wanted to get the right date. May 25th, it went into Gemini. And then it will go through till next June june 9th exactly so there'll be more opportunities as far as the things that you want to grow so there may be even more financial opportunities um more friendships um learning things is really important too during this time because you really want to be an expert because you might be put on the stage like oh you know about that here come talk 
you, you know, you got to be ready for that. And Jupiter will encourage you. It'll be like, yes, here's, here's all the things that are coming into place to me to help you do that. Um, but also going mm -hmm. back to Pluto and Aquarius is we yeah. all need to do this as a group. So mm -hmm. Jupiter's there inspiring you and yeah. you got to speak up because you're yeah. part, of, part of this. You are, you guys out there are part of the solution. You've got a piece right. of the solution. There's no one person that has it. So as we all right. come together as a collective, I feel like that's the Pluto and Aquarius message. Mm -hmm. be, but Gemini is right there going stir that pot. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, totally. Because the Gemini likes to be social, so they're like, "Oh, you want to get a group of people together? I can find people." And then, whoosh, you know, there it goes. So, yeah, it's a really lucky. I mean, Jupiter is your luck, and um, it it can you can go overboard though, guys. Make sure to get some rest in there. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, but um, you may get a lot of inspiration with that voice and that um, the messaging and things like that. So, listen, it's your time. Like we keep saying, it's your time. Do it, y'all. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Um, you know, one planet I did want to talk about, um, which there's going to be a retrograde, mm. uh, Venus. So Venus is the um, planet of love and beauty. It is some of your practical things. So it's rules Taurus and Libra. If you think about Tauruses and Libra, they like their home to lurk a certain way. They like to have art. They like to have sculpture. They're into the finer things. They love fine foods and fine wines, all of that stuff. Right. And also like a good time to find some love if you or, or to um, maybe spice it up a little bit. Um, but March 1st to April 12th of 2025, Venus is in retrograde. So here's the thing. Um, it starts from a storyline like from 2017. So basically Venus is going to, if you had something come up in 2017 around love and relationships or money, it's going to take a little visit there again. Now it doesn't mean your ex is coming back. I don't mean that, but what it may do um, is have you look at patterns in those relationships that you may have not liked too much or things that you really liked and you want to bring forward but it's going to give you that opportunity to look at how you're treating yourself, how you treated yourself in relationships, you know, cause you think about Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, like you need to worship her. And uh, if you're not taking care of yourself or worshiping yourself, how can you do that with anybody else? So it's really, it's really important to take this little, it's a little bit of time, but just to see where maybe you want love in your life to go or friendships or, um, you know, things that you find important to your heart. Uh, so oh, also during Venus, here's some things you don't want to do during Venus retrograde. If you can help it, um, you may want to change your look, cut your hair, all that. Be careful. Um, or, you know, you do something different or you get, you get some body modification tattoos as I raise my arm up, things like that. Um, think about it, maybe put it off until after April 12th, but if you can't, you can't. Um, and the other thing I try to, you know, again, love is going to, is going to do whatever it wants to do. Um, but you shouldn't get engaged or married under a Venus retrograde. Now, if you're engaged to someone, you broke it off, you got back together, you're going to get married during that time. That would be fine. Maybe, maybe. Cause then I question what happened that you broke up. But anyway, um, but yeah, those are usually because those relationships don't turn out the way you think they're going to turn out. They're just not, there's something else that's going to come up you know, that you had kind of a little bit of the rose colored glasses on and now they're going to get snatched off. So I tell people just, just wait if you can, but if you can't just make sure like double kind of think about things or double check things, especially if you're going to get married during that time, make sure everything's set with, you know, where you're getting married and what's happening and all that, but also check on your partner that you're marrying. Um, yeah. And hold off on the engagement if you can, those, yeah. Cause the wedding might not turn happen when you think it's going to happen. Um, or it may not go the way you think it's going to go. Or here's the other thing that sometimes can happen. And and if you happen to be bored on YouTube one night where you've seen the the guy, the guys or the girls that, that propose, and then the person's going, no. And they, you know, they run away. Right. Like, what are you doing? That kind of thing yeah, that can happen during that time too. Yeah. 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 So, you know, be, be sure if you're going to do anything during that point, um, because it, it might, 
turn out a little differently or but if you at least you have all the information you go into it you're like oh yeah i remember that's yeah they were gonna do that okay well that's all right it's not a deal breaker you know i'll put the socks in the hamper no big deal you know what i mean so mm -hmm. yeah so but um the other thing you might do during that time which again just for folks financially just keep keep it hold on to it a little bit uh -oh. you know yeah just but or you know don't go crazy don't go crazy. Good time to check out if there's bills or anything that you like need to pay down or you like, oh my God, I'm paying double on this. Like that's a good time to look for some of that stuff too. Cause Venus does, uh, is a ruler of money. So I didn't know Venus was a ruler. Of, I mean, you spend too much or you spend too little or Re Venus kind of calls you up on it or. Well, Venus is like, let's go out to that really expensive dinner. You know, and you might have to go Venus. We're going to have to get takeout tonight. Sorry. You know? Um, so it might be one of those things where you're like, well, this is, you know, saving money is very important to me right now. Venus is encouraging me to spend it. I could probably cut back here or there kind of thing. Um, so she rules it that way. You know what I mean? She rules it in that sense of like, you know, what are we doing? What are we doing to take care of ourselves? Or what are we spending our money on? Or, you know, do you need another sculpture? Maybe not right now, you know? So it's, she's, she's asking you to slow down a little bit at that time. Yeah. yeah, but but the big thing is the engagements on the weddings, guys. If you can help it, don't do it during that time. And I speak from experience because my first wedding was during a Venus retrograde. And and notice I said my first. Right. So that's Wait. where that's come from, Mary. <laughs> but the uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shopping. I got a lot of reactions to that one. <laughs> <laughs> spring shopping. Just put it off. Yeah. Twelfth May. Do your spring shop year new wardrobe in may yeah yeah i mean unless again it's something that you visited before so like you talk to your hairdresser I'm, I'm speaking for folks here who like to do different colors or extensions or whatever you talk to your hairdresser about it before your hairstylist and they said yeah hold off for a couple of months now it's time sure but if you walk into the hair salon and you're like i want to cut all my hair off and i want to dye it green and i want to do this stop stop because you might be back in a couple of days to be like this isn't really i was having a you know a, a moment um that's a big time people get bangs too don't do that no, <laughs> well i can't i don't have enough to do bangs but i i've tried in the past and it has not been good yeah. so um yeah that that's what venus like so venus sort of retrograde with her in retrograde she's not thinking clearly um okay. about things mm -hmm. yeah 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 keep the house pink no no no. <laughs> no hold off um i do want to mention one thing to folks that's happening this year just so everybody's kind of prepared so we have we're going into another mercury retrograde so i don't know if folks know that november 25th so we're in the shadow what we call the shadow right now um it's going to go through to december 15th and i know a lot of folks like to travel and shop during this time so i would say few things to to be aware of is to either order things early or don't be surprised if all of a sudden you order something and then it's out of stock you may need a plan b for a for a gift um if you are traveling leave yourself extra time if you're driving check your car out make sure everything's cool um you know as far as tires and oil change and stuff like that if you're flying double check your flight sometimes they get delayed or moved we know you know that was happening for a while um, but it really just means like you have to slow down. And I know this is a time where we all speed up for the most part. Um, but you want to slow down because you might miss a detail or, you know, you might order something and it's just, it's in Sagittarius, by the way, too, guys. So Sagittarius is a little bit about, yeah, a jokester. They're fun. As you know, uh, Nancy, we're both Sages. Um, I I, Mary, I, I'm my house. I'm closing on my house December 5th. Me six, December six. Yeah, but you you just read everything a little bit closer. Really? You know, that's all that's all it is. Cause you can't change that, right? So life is gonna be life in. Doesn't matter what the plans planets are doing. So you just make sure that like don't assume something's gonna happen. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, like this will transfer over. Double check that. That's the kind of stuff you gotta watch out for. But yay, closing on your house. Yay. <laughs> so you close into a Mercury retrograde. That's fine. It's yeah. okay. The just slow down. Well, the details have been starting to get really painful. So that must be yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If yeah. It doesn't mean disaster. It just means. Mm -mm. No, well, that's the thing. You know, we, we always say try not to do this or that, but it, do it in a way that is going to make sure that you protect yourself or you are duly informed or whatever it is. Cause like I said, life is going to keep going. And yeah. um, yeah. So like, like I said, during Venus retrograde, if someone's like, look, our anniversary is, you know, March 25th and I want to propose to my partner. Don't let it stop you. I mean, but just know that like, you know, you might get on the train to get to that certain place and the train breaks down. So leave a lot of time, you know, that's, that's the big thing. Don't, don't stop living, but make sure you're totally prepared for what's unexpected. Don't assume all will be well. Correct. Take mm -hmm. stand at those details. Um, that's right. We had a couple other really big things to say when I let you keep going. Yeah. Um, your the eclipses are yes, we do have um so we we have eclipses that make the new moon and the full moon. I got dates for you guys, but they um they make it uh more intense okay. or more pinpointed okay. so we have eclipses that happen every year um we have one that's going to happen on march 14th um that's a lunar eclipse that's a full moon eclipse in virgo um and then we have a solar one march 29th um and that's a new moon in aries so that month you're going to really want to focus on your job not necessarily your career but what you're doing for work right now, right? And then also your health. So with the full with the full moon, it might have something to do with like the waters in your system. So like if you're if you feel like you're um, you know, you're out of balance. Um, some people sometimes they feel like you know, they're carrying, like, you have to put your legs up. You're carrying a little extra water in your body kind of stuff. You you want to make sure that you look for that kind of stuff because um, even though it's in Virgo, it is around the systems and the full, it's in, it's the full moon. So the full moon is the emotions and the watery part. That's where I'm getting that in case you all go, well, wait, it's a Virgo full moon. Yes, but it's the moon in Virgo. So it's still all the emotions and the watery side. Virgo doesn't necessarily like that. So Virgo will want to go and like put something in order. So that may mean like a new workout regime, a new clean out your refrigerator, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's going to be because it could be because um, of like an issue finally coming to a point that you don't want to deal with it anymore, which can be as much, you know, as, as simple, simple as stepping on the scale and going, oh yeah, no, mm -mm, no more of this. Right. So, so I just want to point out that you just said, yeah. I'm writing these notes as we talk. Yeah, yeah. Venus is in retrograde March 1st through April 12th. In Venus, the yeah. I mean, Venus is in retrograde March yeah. In the right. There's a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse right during Venus retrograde. Like mm -hmm. this March is good. Just stay home. No, March is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it brings things to a point, especially the full moons. It brings things to a the pinnacle. So you know, it might be that it's like, oh my God, I love this person so much. I know I got to be with them like forever. Like, I know I got to do something about this. Um, or it may be like, well, you're kind of not fitting into this, my life anymore. We're not fitting into each other's lives anymore. So that may become very apparent during that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then at the end of the month with it being in Aries, the, the new moon, um, it's new ways to, to show yourself as a leader. It's new ways to take action. It's new ways to do things differently on how you appear out in the world. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's the eclipse for that month. So that month's going to be a little, March is going to be a little extra. And then at the end, hmm? a little extra, yeah. a little extra. And then in September, we have the same thing. We have a lunar eclipse in Pisces on September 7th. And then we have a partial solar eclipse in Virgo on September 21st. So again, we're going to have things where we're looking at, um, you know, uh, in Pisces, we're looking at our spirituality. Okay. So we might get extra hits during that time. Um, we might be more intuitive during that time. Um, so just don't be freaked out if all of a sudden you're like, oh, like I'm feeling like I got more intuition going on. Totally fine. And then with the partial solar in Virgo, 
it's it's saying to you that hey go back and check what you've done over the past six months you know oh. earlier at the beginning we had the um lunar full moon okay how are we doing do we need to start something new so mm -hmm. we can take that energy over six months because you can see you know you're changing habits and patterns during that time so then you can make adjustments if you need to okay yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So listen, you know, part of being here is doing the work to, uh, to make yourself exactly how you want to be and more. So if, you know, if you're happy with yourself, beautiful, keep being happy with yourself. If there's things that you want to do differently, do those differently, but it's uh, a lot of getting to know you. So you can't, you know, you, I hate to say it, but some people worry about getting into their shadow side and seeing the things they don't like about themselves, but those can be your greatest gifts mm -hmm. to make change. Yeah, yeah, they are. yeah, yeah. And you're walking away with gems. You're walking away with totally uh, whatever is the new thought form or or new energy or mm -hmm. who knows what it's going to be. But when it's, you yeah shadow work, um, life that mm -hmm. goes good after that. It does. It does. Which again, I know you do a lot of work around that too, Nancy. For people to work on their shadow work and their yeah, yeah you know, so talking Nancy's language right now as usual and everybody else out there, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's time guys. It's time. It's just time. It's time. It's just I, time. I, one little highlight that you did mention. Meanwhile, yeah. Saturn's energy, no Saturn's entry into Aries will change us to take charge of our lives and embrace our leadership potential. Yeah. Yeah. Being really well to the Pluto and Aquarius because mm -hmm. Saturn, is stirring the pot take the lead you know this you know this I'm, I'm reading it that way is that what you would say yeah so here's the difference with saturn saturn is building on what's already on like foundational so if you're a great speaker you're going to be able to speak even better if you need to work on that then you'll be encouraged to take action on that but it will also make people who already have the knowledge it'll push you out a little bit further because saturn is an aries and aries doesn't like to sit still fire sign Right now it's in Pisces. So we're getting a lot of like structure around our spirituality. We're seeing different things about how we want to connect to spirit or to, um, if for those of you who are into religion and maybe looking at your religion a little bit differently or your creative side a little differently. Um, but now it's like, all right, you've had all this time to kind of think about things and be, you know, kind of groovy, esoteric. Great. Now what? So what the work, what work did you do with that, with Pisces, Saturn and Pisces, that now you can bring that into Saturn and Aries, which means you're out there and you're showing your worth. And yeah. um, Saturn, again, is, is I call Saturn like father time, you know, Saturn is karma. So it can be excellent because Saturn's saying, hey, you've got this, you've got this leadership stuff. You've got this, everything you need to take this action. What are we waiting on? Let's go, you know? Um, no, Saturn but, is a slow moving planet, by the way. Saturn is not. Saturn's going to be in Aries for a little while. About two and a half years. Yeah, about two and a half years. So folks that are between 28 and 30 around this time or 57 to 60, you know, um, are going to see some movements very quickly in their in their charts because it's it's a Saturn return. It takes about 28 to 30 years to take one rotation around yeah it's 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 a slower moving planet so you know there's generational stuff so your friends you might be here and they're going through a lot of the same things um you may be tapped to be a leader which also or or to do something which also may make people a little nervous but again these are opportunities that the the universe knows you can you can manage but for those folks who are like between 28 and 30 or, you know, 57 and 60, 56 to 60. Also, if you're lucky enough and you're watching this uh, podcast, thank you. Um, but between 88 and 90, also, you're going through your Saturn return. So awesome. Um, if you're watching us, uh, all of you who are watching us, but that's um, that's a generational planet. So folks who have to really do some work on themselves as an action taker and someone that's seen as an authority, this is the time. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So there's, there's a lot of chances and opportunities to really show yourself to the world. I think during this time and you'll find your, you'll find, I know people hate that phrase. You'll find your tribe, but really you'll find your tribe. You'll find the people who love you. You'll find the people who think, you know, along the same lines as you. And um, 
you know, you'll find your home. If you want to call it that you'll, you'll find your home. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is guys, it's, we got to do it differently. You know, we got to do it all differently. So we're gonna next we're year. Gonna, we're yeah. gonna, sounds like we're, we're, we don't have a choice. We're going to, we're gonna, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so what I'm going to do is, um, I want to keep talking, but I, I, I know. <laughs> so I know. My, we do this. Well, let's, let's reconvene January, February. Yeah. I wanted to do I this. I think that'd be good. Earlier, um, rather than later, be, because there was such a big mindset shift mm -hmm. with the election. And I just said, we need to get some perspective here, not on the election, but on who we are and where we're going. And mm -hmm. so I think, I love what you said. I feel like you, you did that, Mary. I'm really excited I'm uh, glad. Get to focus in. So I will want to tell you guys a little bit more about Mary. Those who stay, have stayed on is you can find Mary at marydalba.com. Mm -hmm. uh, she has two really, a, a couple of different cool things going on. One was um, a new offer, a 2025 tarot outlook. If you really mm -hmm. want deeply into your, um, what's going to happen for you in 2025, go to marydalba.com. And yeah. book this session because it's good yeah. an hour and a half long. So mm -hmm. Do it. And um, so another thing is Mary has and interrupt me if I'm missing anything. The trap yeah. sanctuary, November mm -hmm. 4th. She's gonna have a start her first morning session. So check that out. The traveling souls sanctuary. I right. I, it I found it right away. And good. then um the good. Hype, <laughs> no, it did it came right up. So the yeah. hype. It's hype club subscription hype mm -hmm. dot live hype club dot live is mm -hmm. a subscription um where you can just have mary in your life every month you know and see how that goes it's yeah cool. it's the the two uh, thank you for mentioning those nance i appreciate it so the 2025 tarot look is for you guys to get a whole like month by month reading and things that you should do during that month to kind of work with that energy. Um, and then the high priestess hype club subscription is called the um, unveil your destiny and witches brew. So I'll take your astrology chart, tell you what to look for, for that month. It's very personal to you because I have your chart. And then Julie will take that information and create what she's calling a witch's brew, which is, you know, here's some things you can do during the month. Here's some ways to, here's some candle magic you can do, you know, just based on what she's getting intuitively. So you get two of us there and you get that every month delivered to your mailbox. So beautiful. I really recommend yeah. both of these Thank things. You. And, um, and again, I bring people on the show that I trust and that I love and that I feel are going to help you move forward in your life. So please use Mary as a resource. Um, mm -hmm. If you feel co connected to what she said and um, Mary also offers, uh, you know, a, a discovery session. Do you still offer that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. A 30 minute um, free consultation where if you're like, Hey, I, I have some questions about what type of reading I could use. Um, I, you know, we can go over what you're looking for and I would recommend some options for you. So, you know, if it's a lot of information, like I'm not sure, just book a 30 minute session mm -hmm. with me and we can talk about it. Now I'm telling all my friends, this is not a free reading. This is a talking right. about Mary, what she does. So right. go in prepared. Don't say, tell me, you know, right. Tell, tell me reading stuff. You know, she's right. telling you about herself and she's very generous. So, um, but oh, I, I, well, we're going to have yeah. to have you back Mary for a check-in in early 2025 and uh, see uh, how I love that about stuff. And I'm uh, so happy to have you on. Um, and so for now, I'm just going to, this, this is what we got for now. And I want to make a close by inviting you guys again to use the resources provided to you um, for your own growth and comfort if you need it or guidance yeah. if you need it. And also remember that you are a spirit having a human experience and this too shall grow into something beautiful if you allow it. So for now, stay safe, stay in love and take care of yourself. Yeah. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining the Angelscapes podcast. We hope you've gained new insights and inspiration for your journey to uncover and access your soul's power. For more information and a deeper dive into finding clarity in your life, go to angelscapes.com. Remember to subscribe so you can be part of the discussion. It may just change your life.
See you next time.